Nagzalite, Wikipedia article audio. A Nagzal or Nagzalite is a member of Communist Party of India. The term Nagzal derives from the name of the village Nagzalberry in West Bengal, where the movement had its origin. Nagzalites are considered far-left radical communists, supportive of Maoist political sentiment and ideology. Their origin can be traced to the split in 1967 of the Communist Party of India, leading to the formation of the Communist Party of India. Initially the movement had its centre in West Bengal. In later years, it spread into less developed areas of rural southern and eastern India, such as Chhattisgarh, Odisha, Andhra Pradesh, and Telangana through the activities of underground groups like the Communist Party of India. History Violence in West Bengal Operation Steeplechase Situation during 2011 Situation post-2010 2011 2013 2014 2015 2016 2017 2018 Causes The term Nagzalites comes from Nagzalberry, a small village in West Bengal, where a section of the Communist Party of India led by Chiru May Jumdar, Kanu Sanyal, and Jangal Santhal initiated an uprising in 1967. On May 18, 1967, the Siliguri Kishan Sava, of which Jangal was the president, declared their support for the movement initiated by Kanu Sanyal, and their readiness to adopt armed struggle to redistribute land to the landless. The following week, a sharecropper near Nagzalberry village was attacked by the landlord's men over a land dispute. On May 24, when a police team arrived to arrest the peasant leaders, it was ambushed by a group of tribals led by Jangal Santhal, and a police inspector was killed in a hail of arrows. This event encouraged many Santhal tribals and other poor people to join the movement and to start attacking local landlords. These conflicts go back to the failure to implement the fifth and sixth schedules of the Constitution of India. In theory these schedules provide for a limited form of tribal autonomy with regard to exploiting natural resources on their lands, e.g. pharmaceutical and mining and land sealing laws, limiting the land to be possessed by landlords and distribution of excess land to landless farmers and labourers. Mao Zedong provided ideological leadership for the Nagzalberry movement, advocating that Indian peasants and lower class tribals overthrow the government and upper classes by force. A large number of urban elites were also attracted to the ideology, which spread through Chiru May Jumdar's writings, particularly the historic eight documents which formed the basis of Nagzalite ideology. Using people's courts, similar to those established by Mao, Nagzalites try opponents and execute with axes or knives, beat, or permanently exile them. At the time, the leaders of this revolt were members of the CPI, which joined a coalition government in West Bengal just a few months back. Leaders like Land Minister Hare Krishna Konar had been until recently trumpeting revolutionary rhetoric, suggesting that militant confiscation of land was integral to the party's program. However, now that they were in power, CPI did not approve of the armed uprising, and all the leaders and a number of Calcutta sympathizers were expelled from the party. Subsequently, in November 1967, this group, led by Sushital Ray Chowdhury, organized the All India Coordination Committee of Communist Revolutionaries. Violent uprisings were organized in several parts of the country. 
On April 22, 1969, the Iyukra gave birth to the Communist Party of India. Practically all Naxalite groups trace their origin to the CPI. A separate offshoot from the beginning was the Maoist Communist Center, which evolved out of the Dakshin Desh group. The MCC later fused with the People's War Group to form the Communist Party of India. A third offshoot was that of the Andhra Revolutionary Communists, mainly represented by the Ukri, following the mass line legacy of T. Nagi Reddy, which broke with the Iukra at an early stage. The early 1970s saw the spread of Naxalism to almost every state in India, barring Western India. During the 1970s, the movement was fragmented into disputing factions. By 1980, it was estimated that around 30 Naxalite groups were active, with a combined membership of 30,000. Contention was over the development of minerals and raw materials in the area, and development of a paved road to transport them, along with the order the road brought. If the government could construct a road, the rebels would have lost, if the rebels could continue thwarting road development, the government would have lost. Around 1971 the Naxalites gained a strong presence among the radical sections of the student movement in Calcutta. Students left school to join the Naxalites. May Jumdar, to entice more students into his organization, declared that revolutionary warfare was to take place not only in the rural areas as before, but now everywhere and spontaneously. Thus May Jumdar declared an annihilation line, a dictum that Naxalites should assassinate individual class enemies and others. The chief minister, Siddhartha Shankar Ray of the Congress Party, instituted strong countermeasures against the Naxalites. The West Bengal police fought back to stop the Naxalites. The House of Summon Mitra, the Congress MLA of Silda, was allegedly turned into a torture chamber where Naxals were incarcerated illegally by police and the Congress Cotters. CPIM Cotters were also involved in the state terror. After suffering losses and facing the public rejection of May Jumdar's annihilation line, the Naxalites alleged human rights violations by the West Bengal police, who responded that the state was effectively fighting a civil war and that democratic pleasantries had no place in a war, especially when the opponent did not fight within the norms of democracy and civility. Large sections of the Naxal movement began to question May Jumdar's leadership. In 1971 the CPI was split as the Satyanarayan Singh revolted against May Jumdar's leadership. In 1972 May Jumdar was arrested by the police and died in a Lipoer jail. His death accelerated the fragmentation of the movement. In July 1971, Indira Gandhi took advantage of President's rule to mobilize the Indian Army against the Naxalites and launched a colossal combined army and police counterinsurgency operation, termed Operation Steeplechase, killing hundreds of Naxalites and imprisoning more than 20,000 suspects and cotters, including senior leaders. The paramilitary forces and a brigade of para-commandos also participated in Operation Steeplechase. The operation was choreographed in October 1969, and Lt. General J.F.R. Jacob was enjoined by Govind Narain, the Home Secretary of India, that there should be no publicity and no records and Jacob's request to receive the orders in writing was also denied by Sam Manik Shah. Between 2002 and 2006, over 3,000 people had been killed in Naxalite government conflicts, and by 2009, the conflict had displaced 350,000 members of tribal groups from their ancestral lands.
In 2006 India's intelligence agency, the Research and Analysis Wing, estimated that 20,000 armed Khadr Naxalites were operating in addition to 50,000 regular Khadr's. Their growing influence prompted Indian Prime Minister Manmohan Singh to declare them to be the most serious internal threat to India's national security. Naxalites, and other anti-government militants, are often referred to as ultras. In February 2009, the Indian central government announced a new nationwide initiative, to be called the Integrated Action Plan for Broad, coordinated operations aimed at dealing with the Naxalite problem in all affected states. Importantly, this plan included funding for grassroots economic development projects in Naxalite affected areas, as well as increased special police funding for better containment and reduction of Naxalite influence in these areas. In 2009, Naxalites were active across approximately 180 districts in 10 states of India. In August 2010, after the first full year of implementation of the national IAP program, Karnataka was removed from the list of Naxalite-affected states. In July 2011, the number of Naxalite-affected areas was reduced to 83 districts in nine states. In December 2011, the national government reported that the number of Naxalite-related deaths and injuries nationwide had gone down by nearly 50% from 2010 levels. Maoist communist groups claimed responsibility for 123 deaths in 2013, which was nearly half of all deaths from terrorism in India. The movement is described as terrorist by the Indian authorities but it is however popular in the regions where it is present. According to a study of the newspaper The Times of India 58% of people surveyed in the state of Andhra Pradesh, had a positive perception of the guerrillas, 19% against them. In a 2004 Indian Home Ministry estimate, their numbers were placed at that time at 9,300 hardcore underground cotter, around 6,500 regular weapons beside a large number of unlicensed country-made arms. In 2006, according to Judith Vital Hall, figures put the strength of the movement at 15,000, and claim the guerrillas control an estimated one-fifth of India's forests as well as being active in 160 of the country's 604 administrative districts. India's research and analysis wing believed in 2006 that 20,000 Nagsals were involved in the growing insurgency. Today, some Nagsalite groups have become legal organizations participating in parliamentary elections, such as the Communist Party of India Liberation and the Communist Party of India Jana Shakti. Despite the 2010 Chhattisgarh hambushes, the most recent central government campaign to contain and reduce the militant Naxalite presence appears to be having some success. States such as Madhya Pradesh have reported significant reduction in Naxalite activities as a result of their use of IAP funds for rural development within their states. The recent success in containing violence may be due to a combination of more state presence, but also due to the recent introduction of social security schemes, such as Enriga. According to Maoist sympathizers, the Indian constitution ratified colonial policy and made the state custodian of tribal homelands, turning tribal populations into squatters on their own land and denied them their traditional rights to forest produce. These Nagsalite conflicts began in the late 1960s with the prolonged failure of the Indian government to implement constitutional reforms to provide for limited tribal autonomy with respect to natural resources on their lands, e.g. pharmaceutical and mining, as well as pass land sealing laws, 
limiting the land to be possessed by landlords and distribution of excess land to landless farmers and laborers. In scheduled tribes areas, disputes related to illegal alienation of ST land to non-tribal people, still common, gave rise to the Nagzalite movement.